The Blood Bottler Suddenly, a tremendous thumping noise came from outside the cave entrance and a voice like thunder shouted, Runt! Is you there, Runt? I was hearing you jabbling. Who is you jabbling to, Runt? Look out, cried the BFJ. It's the Blood Bottler. But before he had finished speaking, the stone was rolled aside and a 50-foot giant, more than twice as tall and wide as the BFG, came striding into the cave. He was naked except for a dirty little cloth, piece of cloth around his bottom. Sophie was on the tabletop. The enormous, partly eaten snozcumber was lying near her. She ducked behind it. The creature came clumping into the cave and stood towering over the BFG. Who was you jabbling to in here just now? He boomed. I is jabbling to myself, the BFG answered. Piffle fizz, shouted the blood bottler. Bug swallop, he boomed. You is talking to a human being. That's what I is thinking. No, no, cried the BFG. Yes, yes boomed the blood bottler. I is guessing you have snitched away a human being and brought it back to your bunghole as a pet. So now I is winkling it out and guzzling it as extra snacks before my supper. The poor BFG was so very nervous. There's no, no one in here, he stammered. What, why don't you leave me alone? The bud butter pointed a finger as large as a tree trunk at the BFG. Runt, you little scum screwer, he shouted. Piffling little swish swiggler. Squimmy little bottle wart, prunty little pog swizzler. I is now going to search the primroses. He grabbed the BFG by the arm. And you is going to help me do it. Us together is going to winkle out this tasteful little human being, he shouted. The BFG had intended to whisk Sophie off the table as soon as he got the chance and hide her behind his back. But now there was no hope of doing this. Sophie peered around the chewed off end of the enormous snozcumber, watching the two giants as they moved away down the cave. The blood blotter was a gruesome sight. His skin was reddish pink. There was black hair sprouting on his arms, chest and arms and on his stomach. The hair on his head was long and dark and tangled. His foul face was round and squashy looking. The eyes were tiny black holes. The nose was small, but the mouth was huge. It spread right across the face, almost ear to ear, and it had lips that were like two gigantic purple frankfurters lying one on top of the other. Craggy yellow teeth stuck out between the two purple frankfurter lips and rivers of spit ran down over the chin. It was not in the least difficult to believe that this ghastly brute ate men, women and children every night. The blood bottler still holding the BFG by the arm, was examining the rows and rows of bottles. You and your pibbling bottles, he shouted. What is you putting in them? Nothing that would interest you, the BFG answered. You is only interested in guzzling human beings. And you is dotty as a dog swoggler, cried the blood bottler. Soon the blood bottler would be coming back, Sophie told herself and he was bound to search the tabletop. But she couldn't possibly jump off the table. It was 12 feet high. She'd break a leg. The snozcumber, although it was as thick as a permapulator, was not going to hide her if the bud butter picked it up. She examined the chewed off end. It had large seeds in the middle, each one as big as a melon. They were embedded in soft, slimy stuff. Taking care to stay out of sight, Sophie reached toward and scooped away half a dozen of these seeds. This left a hole in the middle of the snozcumber large enough for her to crouch in so long as she rolled herself up into a ball. She crawled into it. It was wet and slimy hiding place. 
But what did that matter if it was going to save her from being eaten? The blood bottle and the BFG were coming back towards the table now. The BFG was nearly fainting with fear. Any moment, he was telling himself, Sophie would be discovered and eaten. Suddenly, the blood bottler grabbed the half-eaten snozzle snozzle cumber. The BFG stared at the bare table. Sophie, where is you? He thought desperately. You cannot possibly be jumping off that high table. So where is you hiding, Sophie? So this is a filthing, rotsome, glubbage you is eating, boomed the blood bottler, holding up the partly eaten snozzle cumber. You must be cuckles to be guzzling such rub squash. For a moment, the blood bottler seemed to have forgotten about his search for Sophie. The BFG decided to lead him further off the track. That is the scrumdily umptious snozcumber, he said. You is guzzling it gleefully every night and day. Is you never trying a snozcumber, blood bottler? Human beans is juicier, the blood bottler said. You is talking rummy tot, the BFG said, growing braver by the second. He was thinking that if only he could get the blood bottler to take one bite of the repulsive vegetable, the sheer foulness of its flavour would send him bellowing out of the cave. I is happy to let you sample it, the BFG went on. But please, when you see how truly glumptious it is, do not be guzzling the whole thing. Leave me a little snitchet for my supper. The blood bottler stared suspiciously with small piggy eyes at the snozcumber. Sophie, crouching inside the chewed off end, began to tremble all over. You is not switch fiddling me, is you? said the blood bottler. Never, cried the BFG passionately. Take a bite and I am positive you will be shouting out, oh how scrumdily umptious this wonder veg is. The BFG could see the greedy blood bottler's mouth beginning to water more than ever at the prospect of extra food. Vegetables is very good for you, he went on. It is not healthsome always to be eating meaty things. Just this once, the blood bottler said, I is going to taste these rotsome eats of yours, but I is warning you that if it is filsome, I is smashing it over your sludgy little head. He picked up the snozcumber. He began raising it on its long journey to his mouth, some 50 feet up in the air. Sophie wanted to scream, don't! But that would have been an even more certain death. Crouching among the slimy seeds, she felt herself being lifted up and up and up. Suddenly, there was a crunch as the blood bottler bit a huge hunk off the end. Sophie saw his yellow teeth clamping together a few inches from her head. Then there was utter darkness. She was in his mouth. She caught a whiff of his evil-smelling breath. It stank of bad meat. She waited for the teeth to go crunched once more. She prayed that she would be killed quickly.